All right, now that you decided to upgrade to the latest.NET, let's talk about how you can approach the upgrade process. If you're upgrading from .NET Core, .NET 5, 6, or later .NETs, the upgrade should be very simple and straightforward, and you probably can skip this video and go straight to the next one. But if you are upgrading from .NET Framework, your case can be more complicated because .NET Framework and the latest .NET based on two completely different architectural models. There are different styles of project files, different ways of how you reference dependencies. You might need different NuGet packages and so on. So in my life, I have seen applications that could be upgraded in 15 minutes, as well as some very complicated cases where it to companies months or even years to upgrade to the latest.NET. It all depends on your specific case, and we're building tooling to help you and speed up and simplify the process. If your application is more complex than a single page or single window app, I recommend you to first look at the whole solution analyze the dependencies, understand if you're using any APIs that are not available in the, on the latest.NET, and uh, understand what code changes you might need to make, update NuGet packages, uh, set the order in which you want to upgrade projects in your solution, and then go ahead with a clear plan and even rough estimate of how much effort and time it will take. For that, we built a tool for you that is called .NET Upgrade Planner. It's early days for this tool. It's still experimental, but since the tool provides only analysis and doesn't touch your code, it's safe to use it already. To get the tool, you can go to APIs of .NET, and here you can get .NET Upgrade Planner. Click Download Beta. I already have it on my machine, so I'm gonna skip this step. And uh, once it is downloaded, the tool will launch automatically and you will see this screen. Here you have open project, you have select files and select folder. Open project is for cases when you already have used the tool and you saved the .NET Upgrade Planner project and you want to go back to the state where you stopped previously. In our case, we have not used the tool, so we are going to choose Select Folder. I will put the path to the folder of my solution that I want to analyze. First time the tool is run, it grabs all APIs of .NET and it analyzes my solution and it checks if there are any APIs in my solutions that are not supported in the target framework that I would like to move. So here's the tool on this left top window. You can see the list of all assemblies and current framework. Right now it's .NET Framework 4.5. There's also desired framework, and I can change it. I can set desired framework to .NET 8 or .NET 6 or whatever I want. Uh, I can also set desired platform. Right now it's set to any, but if I know that I'm going to be using just Windows, I'm going to deploy just to Windows, I'll probably want to say that to remove some warnings or errors of uh, some code being not supported on all the platforms. Then it provides me the portability score. And here you can see that I can sort it. And there are some assemblies that are 100% compatible. I should not have any issues with those assemblies. And then there is less than 100%. Here I will have some problems. And here is the number of problems for those assemblies. On the bottom, you can see the graph of your dependencies. And I find it extremely helpful because that's how I can see my whole application in the graph. And I can see what my different parts of applications depend on. I also can zoom into just this part of the tree, for example, eShop Legacy MVC. That's what it depends on. I can double click to go back uh, and so on. They're also color-coded, so everything that is gray 
is supported and should not have any problems, but you should always run it and see um, if there are any issues on the, in the runtime. Uh, those that are yellow have warnings and the red ones have errors. Now, on the top right, you can see the detailed description for those errors. And you now I find it more easy when I click not all assemblies, but selected assemblies. So here I select eShop Legacy MVC. Here it is highlighted. And I can see what possible issues I will have with this assembly when I try to move it to latest.net. So I can see there is one warning and one error. The error talks about system.web not being supported. And that's something that needs to be updated, but we have tooling for that. So don't worry much about system.web. A great assistant that I will demo in the future videos will help you to solve that problem. Another very handy thing about this tool is, as you can see, for example, there is Autofac and um, yeah, Autofac 100% supported, but there are other, oh, look for net, for example. Look for net says it has some missing APIs. But the truth is, this version of Log for net that my .NET framework application is referencing is not fully supported. But there is a version of Log for net that is uh, working on the latest .NET, and I just need to update my NuGet packages. So I can filter my assemblies, and I can find only my code. That's eShop legacy. And I can delete the rest ones. Do remove and here remove. So now I have only my code here. And you can see I have way less uh, issues. I can see the dependency uh, here. And I can go through each issue and understand what to do with that. Another helpful thing is to understand how your components depend on each other in your solution. So for example, I can see that my MVC depends on eShop legacy common and utilities are independent. So the way I would approach my upgrade, I would first upgrade common and utilities, and only then I would upgrade eShop legacy MVC to not have any breaking changes once I upgrade one, but not upgrade the other one. So go ahead and try the tool. It provides a lot of help. One thing that I wanted to mention that even though it gives you a percentage of how compatible your assembly is, it doesn't translate into a direct estimate of how time it will take, because sometimes one issue will take you a lot of refactoring, and some other times there is just very simple, fast Googleable issue when you change the dependency to a different NuGet package and everything just works fine. So in this video, you've learned about how to plan your upgrade process and the tool called .NET Upgrade Planner that can help you with this effort. You can get the tool at APIs of .NET slash upgrade dash planner. Thank you for watching and happy porting.